Okay, so today I'm going to demonstrate how to do a uh, wet 1D pulse for water suppression. Um, it can be used for any kind of solvent suppression, but this demonstration today is going to be on water. Um, I'm working on a Varian 500 megahertz spectrometer at Arizona State University, uh, and the sample is 20 milligrams of proline in 70% uh, D2O, 30% H2O. Um, before we get started, let's just take a look at the pulse sequence. Um, oh, and just a heads up, I'm not actually on a spectrometer right now, so a little bit on my screen is going to look different than uh, what's on your screen. But before we get it started, let's look at the pulse sequence. And uh, how this is going to work is basically we're going to suppress the solvent by suppressing a narrow band with, or by pulsing a narrow band with around the solvent. And then with gradients, we're going to dephase that. So we'll do that several times, and then by the time we get over here to our simple FID experiment, um, all the magnetization for anything around the solvent is going to be in the transverse plane, but totally dephased, so it won't contribute to the signal. Um, so to get started, uh, you pretty much want to start the way you always start, and that's just by grabbing a simple proton. Um, make sure that you switch your standard to D2O, uh, which I've already done here. And then obviously lock and shim, um, which I cannot do because I'm not actually on a spectrometer. But so you run your proton, um, which I've already done before this. Um, go ahead and process that. There we go. Okay, and you notice that we have uh, this enormous water peak. If we zoom in around that, you can see we, we can still see uh, a lot of the sample, um, but that's because there's a really huge quantity of the sample in there, and if you had a, you know, a, a peptide or something with a less concentration, you're going to have a lot more trouble seeing that with this huge water peak. Um, so to, to uh, take care of that, we'll run the wet 1D experiment. Okay. So, uh, pretty simple to set this up, actually. Um, let's see, we want to go back to our proton experiment that we've done before. Make sure we keep that processed. Okay. Um, and then we'll go to acquire, and we have to choose what we want to suppress first. First thing. Oh, it looks like, whoops, I'm still in proton. Okay. Wet 1D, spectrum. Now let's phase that. Okay, so um, we go down to the pulse sequence, and first thing I need to do is go back to my water sample, or my proton sample from before, and select what I actually want to suppress. So I'll just grab that with the cursors. Um, and let's just make sure that we have a narrow bandwidth around. Okay. So now I'll go uh, down here to my pulse sequence menu and just tell it to uh, set that line width that I selected right here. And then I want to tell it to make that shape. Okay, and so now it's automatically going to select how much power I need. Um, hang on, looks like set that. Okay, that looks better. And we want to make shape. Okay. So that's going to be suppressing between those two bandwidths I, I selected. Um, yeah, and that's uh, actually all you have to do to set it up from the default. So if I now go to experiment two, where I've already run this, um, you can see that now my huge solvent peak, which used to be right here, is gone. It looks like we picked up some kind of a little artifact. Um, right here, but uh, that's not too much of a problem. You can see, we can see much more clearly uh, what our sample looks like. Um, okay, so now some stuff that you can go wrong with. The first time I sat down to do this experiment, I actually just didn't have the pulse shape. Um, and so you can actually go back and run the same experiment. If I go back to experiment one, um, I'm just going to run the same experiment, except I'm just going to use a uh, Gaussian pulse shape. Um, and if I run this experiment, 
then I get this result. So basically the same same deal here. Uh, looks like I didn't get my artifact and maybe even a little bit clearer data. Um, okay, so some stuff that can go wrong with this. Um, you can, if you don't just accept uh, the pulse shape it creates for you, if you over suppress it for example, um, you can, you're going to pick up some artifacts. So here I've just changed the power in my pulse sequence to over suppress my signal. Um, and you see, uh, it looks like I have some problems here. So it actually, even though I over suppressed this signal, when it went back and phased this, it phased uh, the water up and all my peaks down. Um, anytime you try to auto process one of these experiments that you've um, either over suppressed or under suppressed, you're going to pick up phasing problems just because the variant doesn't know uh, what's supposed to be up and what's supposed to be down. So similarly for um, an under suppressed pulse, you know, I have a similar I have this problem basically where it looks like I'm back to where I used to be um, and if I try to phase it again I'm going to run into a mess uh, just like I did with the over suppressed pulse before. Um, now the other thing that you can do to make a mistake here is if you go back um, back to your proton back to your proton experiment uh, let's zoom out a bit um, and say you just for some reason grab the wrong whatever grab the wrong bandwidth um, let's put that in my pulse sequence so if I okay so I made this shape and I suppress the wrong thing um, that's going to obviously do exactly what you'd expect it to do which is to um, leave you with something not suppressed and again we have the same phasing problem that we get when we try to suppress, but suppress the wrong stuff. So here I oversuppressed um, uh, these peaks that used to be around 3 ppm. Okay, so um, the advantages of using this 1D uh, wet sequence is that it's really easy to set up um, and it's also good for many uh, solvent peak frequencies. If you have several, uh, there's no problem to set multiple uh, peaks, you just go ahead and say, okay, say you have five solvent peaks, and then you would just pick them out with the cursor one at a time, um, set them, and then tell it to make your, your line shape, and it'll go through and take care of each of those. Uh, the disadvantages are it's not quite as good as a pre-saturation pulse or some other different pulses at actually suppressing, um, and if you have peaks that are nearby your water sequence, you have to worry about suppressing them, and in that case you can go to some other more sophisticated uh, pulse sequence like a water gate or excitation sculpting. Um, or you can go to something like that's used in MRSI, like an MPFIR, um, for more advanced, if, if you say had less sample or you have to suppress more water, um, or you have peaks that are near your solvent peak, then you're going to have to go to one of those more advanced signals. Uh, but hopefully this should be a quick um, primer on how you can go ahead and just get this uh, up and running um, for a first time on the uh, 1D wet excitation.